Hi, I'm Debbie Brown with Annie's Creative Studio, and welcome to this Quilter Skill Builders episode. This episode is all about straight line quilting with the walking foot on your home sewing machine. Today, I'll show you how to quickly and easily turn your unfinished quilt tops into comforting treasures by quilting them yourself on your home sewing machine. Simple straight lines can have a high impact on your quilts. I'll show you how to accurately space your quilting as well as other tricks to get you quilting with confidence. This episode is the first in a series I'll be doing on learning and improving your machine quilting skills. Be sure to come back next week for the next part in this series. If you're already a member of Annie's Creative Studio, go ahead and sign in to watch the full episode. If you aren't a member, please join us for a free trial. And now, let's get quilting. The walking foot, or the even feed foot, works in conjunction with the feed dogs. As the feed dogs push the fabric up with each stitch from the bottom, the walking or even feed foot does the same thing from the top. And that way, as the fabric is being fed through the machine, by the machine, it's feeding the top and bottom of it evenly. If you don't use a foot like this when you're quilting, the three layers of your quilt can be fed through your machine separately and risk getting puckers or pleats on the quilt when you're quilting. And that's not a surprise anybody wants on their quilt at all. So check with your machine manufacturer and see if there's a walking foot or an even feed foot available for your model. The first pattern many quilters try on their quilts is called stitch in the ditch, where they're simply stitching where the seam line is throughout the blocks of their quilt. That works great. But if you don't have seam lines on your quilt or you want to use this decoratively, I'm going to call that same design piano keys, which is just a series of vertical lines going up and down your quilt. Since the machine moves the fabric in one direction, forward, we're only going to keep moving it in that same one direction where we're not technically going to stitch down and then back up and then down. We're going to keep stitching in the same direction the whole time. Now this fabric practice sandwich that I have doesn't have any marks or seams on it and I can draw some lines on there. I can use a ruler and a quilt pen to mark those lines. Instead I'm going to use a stencil and a quilt pounce pad. There's white powder inside of this box that whenever I take it out and have the fabric side showing, it's going to push the powder over top and through this screen so that the powder will be forced through the holes and onto the fabric. It's a very quick way to mark my quilt instead of drawing all the individual lines, but do whatever works best for the quilt that you're working on. What I like best about this powder is that this one is removed by ironing it. And there are my lines. On our quilt sample that we have for this class, I have these lines going perpendicular to the border line and the knot shows up next to that border line. So we're going to make a very careful knot to get started here. I'm going to start by putting my fabric sandwich under my foot right where the needle will hit the seam line. I'm going to push my needle down and then back up I'm going to use that top thread to pull up the bobbin thread so that both the top and bobbin thread are on top of my quilt sandwich. I don't want any surprises underneath my quilt. I'm going to put the, the foot back down with the needle right above that same hole and I'm going to very carefully take one stitch forward and hit my reverse button and take one stitch back and then stitch forward again. Now, as I am trying to stitch very carefully down this line, you can see I'm wearing quilt gloves. That's going to help me grip the fabric and steer it. Um, now, with straight lines, it doesn't need that much steering, but I like to avoid any hand and arm fatigue of quilting by ha having the gloves, the, uh, the rubber tips of the gloves, help me guide the fabric. Once I've stitched to the end of that line, which on our quilt sample is out in the batting area of the quilt, I don't need to worry about making a knot because I'm going to sew a separate binding over top of it. 
Instead of pressing the scissor button on my machine right now though, I'm going to leave a long tail and this will help me pull up that long tail at the top again whenever I'm working uh, on the border of my quilt. So I'm going to cut a long tail and leave it and do the same on the back. And I'll start right back up at the top again. So that's needle down, needle up, pull up the bobbin thread. Instead of doing that back and forth stitch like I did last time, I actually have a tack stitch button on my sewing machine. So I'm going to press that once and push my foot pedal down and it's making its own little tack stitch. It's two ways of achieving the same result. And then I will stitch down the line. Once I get to the end, once again, I'm gonna leave long tails. Now, if I want a single piano key over the entire border of my quilt, I will continue to stitch exactly the way I'm stitching right now. If you've noticed on the quilt sampler that I've made, I used a double piano key. And what I did for that was I know on my foot, this mark right here is a quarter inch mark. It's a quarter inch from this mark to where the needle is. So if I place that mark on my foot on the previously stitched line, my needle will be a quarter inch to the right of that. So I'm going to make a line one inch over and then one quarter inch over. I'm gonna start with my needle right at the top again, needle down, needle up, pull up that bobbin thread. I'll do a quick back and forth here. Stitch to the end and leave a long tail. So grooming is really important on your quilt. As you're stitching, you can either take your scissors and cut all of these threads that are right, already knotted, right where they are, or you can take and thread them through the eye of a needle and pull it inside of the quilt. The next pattern is building on the first. You can stitch this design on your quilt with no markings if you have a patchwork design like a checkerboard or a nine patch, a four patch, anything like that with seams. Um, since I don't have seams on my fabric, once again, I'm going to be marking it. And I'm going to be marking it in a one inch grid. I have a one inch stencil. Again, I could mark this with a pen and a ruler if I choose. And I now have the grid on my fabric. I'm going to stitch vertical lines like I did on the first sample. Once I have all my vertical lines stitched, I'm going to take my entire quilt and turn it 90 degrees. And I'm going to stitch what are now the vertical lines, what used to be the horizontal ones, and stitch the same way. And you can see I have a checkerboard stitched on my quilt. To make it look more plaid, which is what I've stitched on the sampler, I stitched one quarter inch on each side of each line. So I know again on my walking foot that this inside mark right here is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to rest that on the previously stitched line. I'm going to stitch a quarter inch to the right of each of my lines. And I know that this inside line on my walking foot is also a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to line that up with my center line. 
and stitch a quarter inch on the left side of each line as I go. So you can see here and on my quilt sample, what a great look this is on a quilt. You can take a very, very simply pieced quilt with a lot of big squares on it and really improve the way it looks or dress it up by stitching it once or twice on either side of the seam. Cross hatching is a traditional quilt pattern. It is a grid of diagonal lines stitched across your quilt. It looks like it might take a lot of marking, but it doesn't take as much as you think it might. Let me show you how to do it. I'm going to mark a series of one inch lines and I'm using a one inch gridded stencil again. I'm going to do just a little marking with my pen. I want to highlight that we're going to quilt what looks like a border area. So a long and skinny section. That's the area where I want to stitch cross hatching. Again, you might think you need to make a lot of marks, but I let the chalk marks in the grid do most of the marking for me. I'm going to mark my very first stitch line, and then I won't have to mark any more. Now, if you're stitching this on a border like I did on our sampler quilt, you'll wanna be careful with your knots when they're going to show on your quilt. But on this piece, I'm not going to take the time to make all of the little tiny little knots. I'm going to start right on this corner and stitch along this first line. And if this is in my border, I can continue past that line because that's going to be in the binding and no one will ever see it. And cut my thread. I've added a left hand seam guide to my machine. And what that is, is it is adjustable. I can move it in and out and I can make my second line of stitching based on my first line of stitching. So I'm going to put my needle down where I want to start that second line of stitching and I'm going to put my my seam guide right where that first line of stitching is and I will make sure that this seam guide follows the seam while I'm stitching. and I have a nice echo. I'm going to do the same thing now if you're counting the number of knots that I have to make on a sample this size it might be tempting to stitch down pivot the quilt and turn it. But if you're doing this as on a full quilt or if you're doing this on the border of a quilt, there's going to be an awful lot of turning and rotating of that quilt and you're really going to get an upper body workout. So while you can rotate and continue your lines, uh, sometimes it's easier to make a knot than it is to shove the entire quilt inside of the small opening of your sewing machine. So I've stitched all of the lines in that one direction, except for those beginning ones. Um, I could put on a right side seam guide, um, but what I will probably do is turn my quilt upside down and make those lines in the same way. So I now have all of my lines going in one direction. Your quilt can be finished at this point. This is a great design just as it is. But I'm going to mark it in going in the opposite direction to give a true cross hatch. I'm going to mark my first diagonal line and I'm going to stitch that. sample I was much more careful about the knots um, so I didn't have all the threads hanging but you can see how simple it was to stitch all of that. To stitch the zigzag I've drawn a border and I've drawn in the first zigzag on my quilt. 
I'm going to start out by stitching that exact line. And when I get to a corner, I want to take an extra stitch. That way, whenever I go to turn the quilt and stitch again, I'm not going to have the bobbin thread pull up. That's a risk whenever you stitch one stitch and change directions. Now, like I did with the cross hatching, I'm going to determine using the left side seam guide how far away from the first line of stitching I want the second line of stitching. So if I want them to be one inch apart, I can take my ruler I'm putting my needle on a, on a whole inch and I'm pushing the seam guide until it hits an inch. So I now know the different the distance between my seam guide and my rule and my needle is one inch. I'm going to stitch along echoing that first line and when I get to that center mark that I've marked, I'm going to take that extra stitch and turn. Oh, looks like I need to take one more stitch. That looks much better. And I can go echo another. I can do another zigzag one inch inside again. Doesn't that look great on the quilt so far? How am I going to get to stitch these, the triangles underneath? I am going to turn the quilt upside down and do the same thing. A fun design to stitch on a block is a square spiral. It's also fun to stitch on an entire quilt. However, it does involve moving the entire quilt around and around and around. So be prepared for some upper body, upper arm uh, workout coming up. I have a six inch block drawn on my square and I have my seam guide placed one inch from my needle. So I'm going to line my needle up with the seam of the quilt and the seam guide with the next seam. So I can start stitching here Again, on the quilt sample, I would make sure that I was much more cautious with my knots, but here I'm going to just go for it. And I can stitch down one inch away. Before I do that though, it's best that I know where to stop this line. So I'm going to bring in my ruler and my marker. Just make a little dot where I'm going to stop stitching. So I'll start, stitch right to that dot, take my extra stitch, stitch and turn. I'm gonna mark that dot again. Rotating this small piece of fabric doesn't feel like much work, but if this were an entire quilt I was moving, trust me, I'd feel it. There we go, I've ended in the last right on the dot. Let's make another dot. Can you see how this is going? While I'm at it, I'm going to make a dot an inch from that line as well. Stitch right to the dot. Turn. Now I'm going to stitch to that dot I've already made again. Turn. It's time to put in some more dots. And you can make, you can stitch all the way to the center or you can stop anytime you like. 
I'm going to actually roll my machine, my needle backwards. I took one step too far. And let's mark where we're going to end. One inch and one inch. And I think I'm going to end it by stitching all the way into the, the stitched the seam line that I already have. So I'm going to close it in the middle. You get to make these decisions for yourself. And make a little knot at the end there. And trim. Did you like that square spiral? It has a lot of options. You can stitch it any width you want. You can leave it open in the center. You can close it in the center. I think it's a fun design. Hopefully you've seen that stitching straight line designs using the walking foot on your home sewing machine can be simple. Thanks for joining me for walking foot part one. Join me next week for more of my tried and true tips and techniques for building your machine quilting skills. And remember to stop by Annie's Creative Studio Facebook page and share which designs are your favorites. Until next time, I'm Debbie Brown.